All right, guys, we got rational functions today. We're going to graph some rational functions and find out some info about what rational or fraction functions look like. Um, first of all, there's a bunch of pictures right here on this slide of the all rational functions um, or fraction things. So, like if you see 1 over x, that's called the reciprocal function. Uh, you got a curve in the first quarter, curve in the third. What you kind of can't tell is the x axis is an asymptote and the y axis is an asymptote. There's asymptotes in all these. Second one, x squared means if you think about it x squared makes all everything positive so that's why both curves are on top in the first and second quadrant that's an asymptote that's an asymptote oops i missed the y-axis is an asymptote sorry about that this one keep looking um asymptote going this way we also have vertical asymptotes there vertical asymptotes there i missed again uh this one you, you can just tell there's a lot of curves involved a lot of asymptotes involved when you're graphing rational functions also there's one other special kind of asymptote this is called a slant asymptote which we're going to get to at the end of this video asymptote actually does that and i'll go ahead and give you a secret that's true whenever your top whenever the degree of your numerator the exponent in your numerator is one bigger than your denominator that's when there's going to be a slant asymptote we'll get to that at the end of the video all right the first thing they're going to do in your homework is ask you what the domain for the function is. Now, the domain for a rational function is everything, all real numbers, except for what would make the bottom zero. So, like this first one, I would say, okay, the domain would be all x such that x does not equal 3 because 3 would make the denominator zero. The second one, all x such that x does not equal 0 because that would make the denominator zero. The third one, all x such that x does not equal zero because zero would make the bottom zero. A little bit different on this one. All x such that x cannot equal negative two or negative one because both negative two and negative one would both make my denominator zero. And the last one here, all x such that x cannot equal negative three because negative three would make the denominator zero because think about it, if I had two x plus six, that would equal zero. If you move the six over, x would equal negative 3 and there you go okay so that's why it cannot equal negative 3 domain all right vertical asymptotes vertical asymptotes are very much like your domain you can find the vertical asymptotes by whatever makes your denominator equal zero so this first one right here let me rewrite a little bit it's 2x minus 11 over and i'm going to factor the denominator make it x plus 4 x minus 2 now Remember, your domain would be all everything except for, all reals except for negative 4 and positive 2, like we did in the last slide. Well, that's also your vertical asymptotes. Your vertical asymptotes, because they're vertical, it's going to be x equals, and I'm going to put x equals negative 4 and also x equals 2. Those are your vertical asymptotes. Let me show you a picture real quick. I actually took a picture of this graph. I'm going to blow it up right here for you. There's a picture of that one. And as you can tell, there's an asymptote going through negative 4 and an asymptote going through negative 2 vertical so that's what the graph of that one looks like all right this other one i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to notice i'm not worried about the top whatsoever for vertical i'm just worried about the denominator on that this denominator i'm going to factor out an x because that's what they have in common that leaves me an x squared minus one which is a difference of square so i'm going to factor a little bit more i have an x and an x plus one and an x minus one and that's important because you got to have every number that makes your denominator zero. So my vertical asymptotes would be x equals zero. That comes from here. X equals negative one. That came from there. And x equals positive one because that came from there. So those are your three vertical asymptotes on that one. All right, horizontal asymptotes, three cases. Um, you can read all this. You can stop and read it if you want to. I'm gonna kind of summarize three cases. The first case is if your numerator and your denominator have the same degree. If that's the case, your your horizontal asymptote is y, it's always y equals when you go horizontal. And it's gonna be the leading coefficient on the top over the leading coefficient on the bottom. And I'll show you that in just a second. The second case is when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. If the bottom degree is bigger, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the y-axis or y equals zero. Sorry, the x-axis or y equals zero. And the last case is if the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. So three cases. If the degree is the same, it's leading coefficient over leading coefficient. If it's the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then it's y equals zero, the x-axis. And if the degree of the numerator is bigger, there is no horizontal. All right, so next step, 
find the horizontal asymptotes. So I'm looking at, I'm just looking at the first terms. I'm looking at the degrees. They're both degree four, which means my horizontal asymptote, which is going to be y equals, is going to be the leading coefficient of my numerator, which is negative seven, over the leading coefficient of my denominator, which is 11. And that's it. That's your horizontal one. If I look at the second one right here, I'm going to y equals again. Look at the first terms. That's x1. That's x cubed. Because the top degree is less than the bottom degree, it's always y equals 0, which is also the x-axis. That's all you do for horizontal. And one more thing. If the top would have been bigger degree, there would be no horizontal asymptote. All right. It says graph this, this thing. Um, so I'm going to get my asymptotes first. First thing I know is what makes the bottom zero. What makes the bottom zero is zero. So my vertical asymptote is at x equals zero. My horizontal one, I'm looking at my first terms. The degree is two, the degree is two. So I'm doing a leading coefficient of the numerator, which is two, over leading coefficient of the denominator, which is one. So it's, it's just y equals two. Okay, so there's my horizontal, there's my vertical. So when I start drawing my graph right here, what I know is, let me get some slashes, some ticks on here. Um, I can draw my horizontal asymptote through two. So my horizontal asymptote is doing this right through two. My vertical asymptote is, is x equals zero. That's really the y-axis. So that's going, I'm going to kind of color it in blue a little bit, but that's my horizontal. So when I graph it, I'm actually going to use my calc table function of my calculator to see what my graph is actually doing. And we're going to use your calculator tomorrow, so don't worry too much. So the graph's actually doing this. And it's doing this, two curves, getting closer and closer to the asymptotes, but not touching them. And that's what it looks like because of the asymptotes. The asymptotes shape your graph. All right, oblique, this is the last thing. Oblique is called a slant. I told you this is what would be at the end of the video. There is a slant asymptote when the degree of the numerator is one greater. Remember, there's no horizontal when the top is bigger than the bottom, but there is a slant asymptote. So. The directions here say find all the slant asymptotes of this one. If you look at the degrees, that's degree two, that's degree one, which means there is there is a slant asymptote because it's one bigger. And here's how you find it. The way you find the slant asymptote is you divide. So I went ahead and set up the synthetic division here, and I'm going to divide this out. I'm going to bring the two down, multiply, add, multiply. Now, do not expect to get a zero at the end. It doesn't even matter. To be honest, this is one time, probably the only time that you do synthetic division that you could care less about your remainder. Your slant asymptote is always gonna be y equals, and it's gonna be whatever you got here, that line right there, it's always gonna be a line because this is always one less than the top. So you're always gonna get two numbers down there, and you're gonna put, you're just gonna write it like this, the two x plus one, because we started with x squared, and your answer starts with x at first. That's your slant asymptote. And what you do, that's, that's slope intercept form, you could just graph that line to be your slant asymptote. All right, so summary. All right, this has everything in. I'm just gonna read through really quick. Um, and you can, you know, stop it and read all you want to. Um, let's see here. Vertical asymptotes occur wherever, whatever makes the bottom zero. Horizontal, the x-axis is a horizontal if the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator. It is the x-axis, it's other than the x-axis when they have the same degree and you do leading coefficient over leading coefficient. You get an oblique or slant asymptote if the degree of the numerator is one greater than the denominator. Um, there can be only one horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote and never both. An asymptote is not part of the graph. Now here's a weird thing down here. Crossing an asymptote. The graph of a rational function can never, ever, ever cross a vertical asymptote. It might cross a horizontal in some special cases, but it doesn't necessarily do so. Be honest most of the time it does not but there are cases when it does and they're, they're, it's not that it's rare because they do sometimes especially when the horizontal asymptote is between two vertical asymptotes that's all we got see you tomorrow and we'll work on it